Hi, my name is Mrs. Martin and I'm a teacher at Cyrie Elementary School. You may remember me from previous science videos that we've put out. I hope that you've been learning a lot and that you've been enjoying them as much as we've enjoyed making them. Earlier this week, we started looking at Newton's laws of motion. Today, we're going to focus on gravity and we're going to think about how those laws of motion apply. We know that gravity is an invisible force that pulls us to Earth. But why? And does everything have the same gravity pull on it, the same gravitational pull? Does everything fall the same way? So today we're going to look a little deeper into that and we're going to do some experiments as well as watch some videos. The first video that I'd like you to watch is a really fun music video that was put out by OK Go and it's upside down, inside out. It's a lot of fun. It's a twist that they've done with gravity and I want you to go ahead and go to the next video where you can watch that. Wait, what? How were they able to do that? That's so cool. Well, what you just watched is musicians traveling on the G-force plane, which was created to help astronauts understand the feeling of weightlessness. Weightlessness is achieved by doing aerobotic maneuvers known as parabolas. Specially trained pilots perform these aerobotic maneuvers, which are not simulated in any way. Next, the plane is pushed over to create the zero gravity segment of the parabola. I, for one, have a dream of one day being able to be in the G-force. It would be so cool to be able to experience that weightlessness effect. So you have learned that gravity is the Earth's pull. Gravity is an invisible force that pulls objects toward each other or toward the Earth. Earth's gravity is what keeps you on the ground and what makes things fall. What goes up must come down as it is pulled to the center of the Earth. Let's take a look at this video that I've made of some inertia beads. Take a look at this video with my beads. As I pull the beads from the cup, they begin to fall. But then something interesting begins to happen. Do you see the beads rise out of the cup all on their own? They continue to fall and now they first travel upwards and then down. The science behind this fountain of beads involves several principles, one being inertia. According to Newton, inertia is the tendency of all objects and matter in the universe to either remain motionless in the first place, or if moving, to continue moving in the same direction and at the same speed unless acted on by some outside force that can slow them, stop them, or change their direction. Thanks to gravity, lifting the container higher off the ground loaded potential energy into the beads. The initial tug that you gave to start the beads flowing was all that was needed to turn the potential or gravity stored energy into kinetic or motion energy. As the speed of the flowing beads increased, you probably noticed that the string of beads actually lifted slightly above the rim of the container due to the inertia of the fast moving beads. The arcing of the beads is caused by the downward force of gravity overcoming the upward inertia of the moving beads. Gravity finally wins and the beads inevitably curve downward and head for the ground. Now this is something that you can do at home with some Mardi Gras beads. Um, you can buy these at the dollar store. And you can see here I have a whole bag of them. And all you're going to do is you're going to snip the beads and then you're going to glue them together. And here I actually glued a different color just so you can see the start. And then you'll need a cup to put them in. You'll need quite a few of these to make a really impressive long chain. An alternative option is to use these metal beads that I used in the demonstration. Um, these used to be attached to bank teller pens, but you can buy them online. Um, they're also used for um, the dog tags that soldiers might wear, and they're connected with a little, um, oops, now it's starting, a little connector. So once this inertia starts, it takes over, and it's really fun to watch. Um, you can do it again and again, um, but you will need to make sure that it doesn't get tangled up. So we know that what goes up must come down, but does everything fall at the same rate? 
I want you to do a project on your own. I want you to choose some random objects that you have around the house and I want you to drop them from the same height. Try using different objects that are different mass, and different size, and I want you to hit pause and go do this right now. What did you discover? Did one object hit before the other? Did they land at the same time? What can you conclude from this? Now I want you to watch the same experiment being done on a much larger scale.